brought to you by Sunbeam, the best electric appliances made. The deluxe Sunbeam Mixmaster Food Mixer and Sunbeam Time. New slimline beauty and new dimensions in time for every room in your home. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And it's a great pleasure to have a new mystery guest panelist tonight. He starts next week as his, in his second season as The Rebel the star of the favorite television show on Sunday night, Nick Adams. Good evening. And on my left, truly a beautiful human being, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, Nick. And now a gentleman who has just returned from being a judge at the uh, Miss America contest in Atlantic City. And he returned quite gloriously, bringing with him Miss Montana and Miss Washington. And that's quite a lot of missing, I want you to know. <laughs> Phyllis, if you are watching, here is your husband, Bennett Serb. <laughs> Just before he came out, these two darling girls, Miss Montana and Miss Washington, asked me if John Daly really knew what he was talking about when he used all these big, long words. I said, he may know, but we don't. <laughs> well, here he is to explain for himself, John Charles Daly. Bennett has been down in Atlantic City, had a wonderful week. <laughs> Obviously rested a good deal, didn't have his mind really on his fort, which is, as you know, humor. Because the joke he brought back was, what's the difference between a tuna fish and a piano? And the answer is, you can tune a piano. And that's a pretty bad way to start a program. <laughs> I did this to Bennett, frankly, because usually he tells them to me and then comes out and says, I told them to him. <laughs> Well, it's nice to have Nick Adams with us on the panel tonight. And panel, uh, it's nice to have you all here because we're going to change the rules a bit. We're out to puzzle you with uh, mystery guests and occupations. But tonight, there's a change in the order of things. We are going to have two mystery guests. And this will require that you don your masks now because the first of our guests tonight is going to be a mystery guest. And we'll meet our first mystery guest after this... And now to meet tonight's first mystery guest. Will you enter and sign in, please? panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery guests, we always change our form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with Miss Arlene Francis. Would one find your name uh, in the entertainment pages of the newspaper? Yep. Mr. Sir? Have you spent any time recently in Atlantic City? <laughs> no. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Did you ever study dentistry? Did you ever study dentistry? Good. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Adams. Um, are you an actor? Nope. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Oh, um, uh, are you a writer? Yep. Mr. Sir. Have you ever written a play that has been produced on Broadway or near Broadway? No. No? Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Have you ever written a novel? You ever written a novel? Yep. Mr. What, Adams? What was that, a yes, yes or a no? That was a yep. <clears throat> Are you Ernest Hemingway? <laughs> no. 
five down and five to go, Miss Patsy. I mean, that way it's Caleb up here. Here goes. I'm, uh, he's, he's my favorite author, that's why. If this is who I think it is, it's my favorite author. Are you a great historian of Lincoln? You're simply terrible. <laughs> it's the glorious Carl Sandburg. Arlene, actually sitting talking with Mr. Sandberg backstage for a few minutes just a little bit ago, he said, you know, I've spent an hour and a half with, with uh, Arlene, and I don't know whether she'll be able to recognize my voice, and he was rehearsing his... John, I, I played the Mr. Sandberg show. Uh, down at our farm in North Carolina did a half-hour TV show. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, we're an old romance, Carl Sandberg and I. Something not strictly cricket. A little bit <laughs> I lose that she should be on the panel. I've played his Lincoln portrait album at least 5,000 times. My wife thinks I'm nuts, but I, I think it's just fantastic, Mr. Sandberg. It's a pleasure, pleasure meeting you after all this time. Did we get six no's? We got five no's. That ain't so bad. Oh, no, that's, that's... Give him the $50 anyway. He oh, raises his goat. Over <laughs> no, he needs it. <laughs> I must say, if I can recall a bit of history, those of us who serve the, the profession of journalism uh, have a re very particular reason for having a great fondness for Mr. Sandberg. We did a television program a few years ago with which we raised basically a good deal of the money that built the Overseas Press Club in memory of the correspondents who died during the war. And nobody was so selfless in his willingness to serve on this program, to appear on it, and to be a part of, of uh, what we've all, needless to say, been very proud of, building a memorial to the correspondent. John, Mr. Sandberg is too modest to say he's going to be glorified on the stage in New York beginning Wednesday night. The world of, of Carl Sandberg, yes, it does. It opens Wednesday night with... Uh, actually, we had Betty Davis here two weeks ago. Uh, And I must say, we can't let him go without also putting something else into the record. It's there in the record, but I know that one of the things of which you're most proud is that you are, I think, one of the two men who were non-members of the Congress uh, and of government to ever address private. a joint session of the Congress. And private citizen. A private citizen who did it. It's wonderful of you, sir, to give us some of your time and to grace, if I may say, and I use the verb with great, great, good, sincere meaning I've, to grace our program. I was asked of the 500 or more programs that uh, there have been of this, uh, that I have seen, uh, I, I, would get, I would estimate 200. Ah, that's I wonderful. know this panel, I could arrest any one of them on site and testify <laughs> with them. I identify them in any court of law except the lad, the lad next there between the two ladies. My first time. Yeah, this is Mr. Adams' first time with us, sir. Thank you very much for being our guest, Mr. Sandberg. I hope that we'll always have you on this. Could I give you... Wait a minute. Could I give you a prediction about the coming election in November <laughs> that uh, you will agree with me is correct? Yes, sir. A prophecy? Yes, sir. The next President of the United States will have a luxuriant head of hair. <laughs> A man of infinite good humor and wisdom. Because that's true, and that's about the only thing you dare say about the coming election, too. Panel, congratulations. Actually, you, with that wonderful eep, and nope, we thought it would take a little more time. Let's see what you can do with our second challenger. Would you enter and sign in, please? Donna? Schofield, is that right? It is Miss Schofield, and where are you from? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Panel, may I present Miss Schofield, and at the same time say that the line that you're looking for is, of course, a line which is uh, pursued in summer vacation weekends 
and uh, odd times when one isn't busy at school because Miss uh, Schofield is back at the university. Will you come and join me here, please? Do you know how we keep score? Yes. All right, then we'll let the panel know nothing at all, but let the audience in the theater and the folks who are watching at home know all about what your line is. All right, panel, we can tell you that Miss Schofield is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you uh, work for a profit-making organization, Miss Schofield? No, I don't. One down and nine to go, Mr. Adams. I just came back from doing five days in Pittsburgh at the Allegheny County Fair. Did we meet there? You look awfully familiar. No. Nope. Two down and eight to go, Miss Preston. <laughs> That's wishful thinking. <laughs> Uh, Miss Schofield, do you work for some branch of the government? No, I don't. That makes it three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Schofield, do you work in either the educational or the hospital fields? No. That's four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Can both sexes profit by whatever it is you do? Yes. Are people better off for what you do? Yes. How narrow is your term of reference? As narrow as I can get a yes with. Yeah. As narrow as you can get a yes with. Well, then we'll give you a yes, <laughs> but this ought to tell you. Actually, uh, since we would agree that having sought this service and having received it, the tendency would be to believe that they are to some degree perhaps instructed, but certainly have been uh, bemused. We'll say that they're improved. Oh, well, at least I've gotten that they seek her service. She doesn't just come and put the arm on them. Dorothy, when I make a gap like that, you don't have to point it out. <laughs> I'm sorry, John, but at least that widened the narrowness a little, and I thank you. Uh, then people do have to uh, encourage Miss Schofield. She just doesn't come up and nab them or anything like that. Well, I don't think we ought to say here out in the public rostrum that Miss Schofield encourages them. Well... There are people who have need of her services, and therefore they uh, get her services. Is that it? No, I would she say... She's not thrust upon them. That's what I'm trying to clarify, John. No other agency thrusts Miss Schofield upon these people. They voluntarily take advantage of her services. That's all I want to know. Yes or no? Please. <laughs> Well, I've seen a question spread out far enough to cover half the globe, and it's been fun to see it that way, so we'll give you a yes. A yes to what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Schofield's services are not thrust upon them. That's all, that's all I want to know. Uh, could Miss Schofield's services be purveyed to children as well as adults? Yes. Uh, are your services, Miss Schofield, purveyed indoors? No. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Adams. Miss Schofield, would I have any reason to come to you for services? Yes. I would? Um, would my, um, would my wife have any reason to come to you for services? Yes. Good. She would, too. Are you in the finance business? <laughs> <laughs> no to that. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Uh, do you have anything to do with parks or outdoor places where people come to view something, like a zoo? Yes. Uh, well, do you work in a zoo? Zoo, you work in a zoo? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, are you a guide, or uh, do you uh, show people the monkey cages, or do you have anything to do with the, taking people through the zoo? You're dubious. No. You feel... All right. No, I don't... That, uh, the guide sense the take through, we'd give you a no, Mr. Sir. Miss Schofield, do you have anything to do with actually taking care of some of the animals? Yes. Is it one particular group of animals that you uh, center your attentions upon? Yes, one group. I mean, we will... Uh, Are they wild animals? Naturally, if they're in a zoo, I would gather they'd be rather wild. Well, let's say they have tendencies in that direction, and Miss Schofield tries to dampen the ardor that they have for being wild. Are they four-legged animals? 
No. They're Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> no, they aren't. Actually, I think we're being a little unfair. I'm going to turn all the cards over, but I think it would be a little unfair to, to make you come right down to the specific animal. But Miss Schofield has a wonderful job. She is, the, the, in effect, the babysitter for the chimpanzee at the children's zoo. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She bathes, clothes, feeds, and plays with this chimpanzee, right? Right. Is he good fun? Is it a he or a she? Joey's a boy. Joey's a boy. Is he good fun? Oh, wonderful. Now, this is not meant to be rude, and I, I want you to understand from the beginning that it is not in any attempt, in any way, an attempt on my part to reflect upon what I'm sure is the splendid relationship you have with Joey. Does he ever just fall off and let you have one? Never. He doesn't dare. No. Wait till he grows up. Doesn't he? Well, He's only in baby clothes now. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Goldfield, will you do me a favor? Leave Mr. Daly in New York when you go back to Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between a tuna fish and a piano? <laughs> You're very kind. Thank you very much, Miss Gilkey. It was nice much. to have you with us in Los Angeles. And we'll meet tonight's second mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Once again, back to the usual special feature of our program, the appearance of a mystery celebrity panel. Blindfolds all in place? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, good. If this is true, let's have our mm, second mystery guest enter and sign in, please. panel once again a reminder the different form of questioning for the mystery celebrity you ask one question at a time in turn moving clockwise <laughs> and we'll begin it all with Bennett sir well just to clear my own suspicious mind have you recently been in Atlantic City <laughs> no no one down and nine to go Miss Kilgallen all right just to clear mine have you ever studied dentistry <laughs> <laughs> No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Adams. Are you Ernest Hemingway? <laughs> no. I, Three well, down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Are you a performer? Yeah. Mr. Zip. Are you appearing in a motion picture that is now playing on or near Broadway or is about to open there? Yeah. Miss Kilgallen. Uh, does... Have I ever seen you in Maxime's in Paris? Jasper? No. It's the dentist you saw in Maxime's in Paris. <laughs> Four down six to go, Mr. Adam. Did, did he say he was uh, appearing in a motion picture soon to open on Broadway? That yeah. is now playing. Oh, now it's now to open. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's soon to open. Oh. Mm. I got it. You appear on television besides motion pictures. Yeah. Miss Francis? Uh, have you a show of your own? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Sir? Uh, do you ever sing in either the motion pictures that you play in or on, or on the show of your own? <laughs> no. There's an honest man if I ever saw one. Five down, five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, are you generally considered to be a leading man? Uh-uh, uh, 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 no. That's an honest man indeed. Six down and four to go, Mr. Adams. Uh, have we met personally? Do I know you? Yeah. Miss Francis. Oh. Uh, are you a comedian? a dubious comedian. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Sir. Are you one of the younger group of... Uh... <laughs> I guess we're now... <laughs> uh, 
Now could... answer the question. No. No. <laughs> Seven dollars free to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you the rugged type? <laughs> No. <laughs> hey, pardon me. What? <coughs> Neither am I. That ain't down in two to go, Mr. Adam. Uh, are you Sir Lawrence Olivier? <laughs> How now? Larry, is that you, Larry? No. <laughs> no. That's not down in one to go, Miss Francis. In the picture that you are now playing in on Broadway, did you receive rather smashing notices, although you did not play a major role? Yes. Milton? <laughs> yes. See Milton Berle? <laughs> ah, Milton Berle. Fooled ya. Fooled ya. Nobody knows to get. We got nine. You are one of the younger comedians. No, I'm one of the younger comedians. I've been it. Please, we know how you feel, but you know, don't try to put this burden on Milton. No, I will. Uh... He got a smashing banner headline notice in a picture in which there are other stars that are very, very famous. He makes a guest appearance, really. Mm -hmm. so, yes, but for, is it the most unusual thing you've ever seen? For the, it, I think it was the New York Times it was, to give a it's, headline it's to Milton Bosley Girl Crowder, in a picture the with most unusual uh, notice. Frank Sinatra right. and, and but, uh, Peter mean, Lawford. Not, considering no, the title wrong, of Marilyn Arlene. Monroe and Tony Randall <laughs> and Gloria Arlene, Swanson. considering the title of the picture, what else would you expect from oh, Milton? Oh, let's make love. Let's make with love. What are we waiting for? Ah! <laughs> I was talking to Mr. Sandberg backstage, and I asked him if, uh, if he could give me some material. And he said, there's no use in me giving me any of Lincoln's, because you've been doing them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And Milton, I, I rushed to forward to say this is not by way of a plug. I'm curious. You're going to start a new show on television next week, your own Milton Burroughs bowling show? No, it's not Milton Burroughs. It's called Jackpot Bowling, and uh, I'm the host of it. I'm Master of Ceremonies. You're changing your name to Jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you doing? You're going to mix bowling and, and variety? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, I wish this was my show. What I wish. <laughs> No, it's jackpot bowling. We used to, last year we had jackpot bowling. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, it's, it's a bowling show with champion bowlers, and uh, I'm going to be... you with the pins? I'm not talking. You're very bad. Now, uh, <laughs> no, they don't throw me. I'm going to be master of ceremonies. We're going on Monday night, starting next, a week from tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, 10.30, uh, Eastern uh, Daylight Time. Uh, uh, over the NBC. <laughs> Hello. Hello. And, uh, there we no, go. I still want, but do you have variety in this? Or there is, is going to be variety. I'm going to be the master. So there isn't any script. It's off the cuff, just like your panel is and yourself. Oh. Uh, uh, ad lib, and uh, I'm going to be master. So I'm going to introduce the players, clown around, and kid around. I want to hold it as a, what is it, Nick? I'll be a guest panelist, huh? What'd you say? Can I be a guest panelist? You can be a guest bowler if you want. Can you bowl? Sure. Can you bowl, Dorothy? Nick shoots the pin. About 164. You don't bowl it. You couldn't tell me you bowl 164. No. If That's you, bad. If you bowl 164, you're, you're on my you. show. You're a champion. I'll be on. You're on? She Marlene? means in two games. What'd you no. say, Miss? In two <laughs> games. <laughs> oh, Bennett, keep punching. <laughs> keep punching. You'll hit yourself, Bennett. Milton. <laughs> You, I don't know what you were here earlier on to hear Bennett's new what joke. What are you coughing? You better get a room. I, you're, <laughs> they're very good oh, cigars. The Phillies. Cigar. Go ahead. I got that in too. <laughs> you got that in too. What did you say? What were you going to say? Did you hear Bennett's joke? I want, yeah, about the tuna fish. Isn't that a honey? It's the worst joke I've ever heard. <laughs> I got it from you. <laughs> you didn't get it from me because if there's any stealing... <laughs> Most of your stuff would be in the can, and you can't can a tuna fish in the can or tuna it or it's something. It's very good. I wish I had a topper for that, but I'm not going to use it. <laughs> anyway, I do think somebody ought to say on this program that it is going to be a blessing to television to have you back on May it I again. I just say Tony. one more thing before I, before I leave? No, please. It is. Um, <laughs> um, 
that uh, just like this show, my show is going to be the, practically the only new live show that's going to start next uh, year. And starting September 9th, it's a live show every week. We do right. it live. Some of them will be dead, but, uh, <laughs> but it's a great pleasure. It I know you've got with, a lot of more. It goes without saying, sire, that you start your new show with all our blessings. And we hope Thank you. And I hope you'll be watching point. Jackpot Thank Bowling. After this word from our alternate spot. We're a bit short of time tonight, so with your permission for the panel and for all of us <laughs> to work on the program, I say good night. Besides, I haven't got the courage to send it over to the panel. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. On What's my line? What's my line? <laughs> What's my line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Conlon. Al Sims, Biggie.